try to stop them on the offensive boards more, but I think we did a pretty good job. We need to tighten it up, though. Um, our defense is predicated on preventing paint touches. Um, I think we did a good job overall of that. I think that's what helped us a little bit in that area. And um, just staying locked in with energy, everybody having each other's back, um, being in gaps, being able to take charges when we have the opportunity, that was big for us to um, um, prevent some of those drives and easy layups. Left side again. How, how aware have you got, were you guys of the fact that three double digit seeds had won earlier in the day and did that heighten awareness at all for you guys about upset chances or? Um, I think seeing all those games, we're get, we got like a feel for the environment of the tournament. Um, we definitely didn't want to be one of those teams, but we definitely were only locked in our game. Um, we knew what we needed to do. Our coaches did a really good job of preparing us for, um, all throughout this week. So um, we just wanted to stay locked into the moment. Uh, offensively, what guys, what, what, did, what guy got you guys clicking in the first half, and then what happened in the second half when you guys only had the, the four baskets? Uh, first half, I think we did we did an excellent job of getting carried the ball, um, getting a lot of paint touches. We drove, played for one another. Um, second half, they, um, you know, put a lot of pressure on us, and we need to stick to that more, just getting the ball and being more poised. But the first half, I thought we did a great job of sharing the ball and just getting to the paint and taking our kind of shots. Um, like he said, the poise was a big factor. Um, everybody playing for one another, the pace, um, being able to get rebounds and run. I think that's what um, predi um, um, started a lot of the layups that we got in the first half, being able to get rebounds, get turnovers, and um, push the ball. And um, second half, we didn't do that as well. Anything else for the players? All right, we'll let those guys go. We'll open it up for coach. Thanks, guys. Uh, Buzz, uh, congratulations. Uh, you've accomplished a lot in your five years at Tech. Do you feel like Thanks. getting an NCAA tournament win is kind of the final, the final piece, the final brick, uh, you know, of, of accomplishments there? What you, what you were trying to do here at Tech? Yeah, I don't. I don't think that I was uh, upon arrival that I was smart enough to have a plan other than to just be better the next day than I was the previous day. I don't think that um, the collective thought of the culture of our program is to have a PowerPoint presentation on what our plan would be. I think what we've done um, speaks to the character of the parents of these kids. I think what we've done speaks to the character of our staff and their work ability, work ethic ability. But I also think that it's not just this group. I think it's all of the staff members and all of the players that have been a part of the program from the very beginning. I don't think um, in any organization, whether it's athletics or not, that you lose because of one reason or you win because of one person. I think it's everybody pulling in the same direction. Uh, the support of our administration, the support of our community, all of those things are big pieces to the puzzle. But I don't think that um, five years and one day ago today that I was like, yeah, we're on, uh, on this day we're going to win our first NCAA tournament game. I'm not, I'm not smart enough to think like that. But I like to work and I like to wake up early. And uh, for whatever reason, people that are of the same ilk I'm attracted to, and they're attracted to me, and I think that helps. Back left. Uh, uh, Buzz, what do you think of the, uh, Justin's play tonight and to get 27 minutes out of him his first game back? How important is that just for him to build on? It's hard for me to quantify the piece that I have when five's on the floor. Uh, statistically, I thought he was okay. Um, but when the ball is in his hand, I feel like he's going to make the right decision for Virginia Tech. I didn't go into the game, like I said yesterday, having, a, you know, at this moment in time, he'll play and he can play this long. Um, we wanted to do whatever we could to win the game. And how was it that he could help us win the game? And I think he was a big part of that. Any additional questions? Nope. Looks Paul, like what's oh. up? Josh, thanks one, for coming. One more from Josh here on the right, and then. Did you say hello to my wife? Do you remember him, sweetie? 
Josh Peter with USA Today. Hey, Buzz, it looked like you were maybe making some notes in the box score or uh, circling stuff, and I wonder if you can share some of your thoughts. Yeah, uh, eclectic, weird, uh, whatever adjectives you would have. Um, we don't study much on the box score. Uh, we call them whiteboard stats. It's nine different categories that we study, nine different things that we emphasize to our team. Um, maybe it's a byproduct of some of the numbers that are on the box score, but I don't like to have too much of an opinion in post game because I'm so emotionally bankrupt. I like to have facts. And so I just like to study that stuff before all the smart people ask me questions. All right. No, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Can you, can you share some of the, uh, the facts that you got there that might support? Uh... Yeah, so uh, Kay mentioned it. Um, we referred to, if we're only talking about offense, uh, when the ball gets to the paint off the pass or the bounce, that's a paint touch. And then, you know, the NBA uh, lane is one foot wider on both sides. And then our practice facility, that's painted on the floor. And defensively is what I'm talking about now. We call that a box touch. So if the opponent gets it to the box off the pass or the bounce, that is a box touch. And so uh, it's just stuff that I studied when I was young what the field goal percentage is offensively when the ball touches the paint prior to a shot, and then defensively, what is your defensive field goal percentage when the ball touches the box prior to a shot. So um, everything else kind of is a derivative of that. Um, if, the, if the ball doesn't touch the box, then you weren't in rotation. If the ball does touch the box, obviously you are in rotation. And so the next layer to that fact that we study is the contested three percentage. We changed how we play defensively last year with uh, nine regular season games to go. And we've just kind of built from that. So box touch percentage is really important. Contested three percentage is really important. And then defensive rebound percentage is really important. And I think uh, maybe ironic is not the right word, but those three categories were the difference for us tonight, specific to the roster of St. Louis. If you look at what they had success with this season, they're the fifth best offensive rebounding team in the country. Well, most of the time, if you get an offensive rebound, it's because rotation was forced. And so now they have inside position and how they were scoring so much in the second half was, I think they had eight offensive rebounds. So the ball got to the box, Virginia Tech is in rotation, the shot goes up, and because of the complexion of our roster, we're gonna be in a bind. And so, um, maybe that answers some of your questions. I could talk for a long time, but I don't want it to come across in a condescending way. All right, thanks coach. St. Louis is coming up. Paul, I'm sorry, you got to stay till Sunday. Yeah, yes, sir. Thanks for even asking. Thanks for listening to the radio show. Okay, well, welcome St. Louis to the dais. Um, just a uh, reminder if we have some new folks in or not, uh, opening statement from coach. We'll turn it over to the student athletes for questions, dismiss them, 
and some questions for Coach. So we're joined by Javon Bess, Hassan French, and Coach Travis Ford. Coach, we'll turn it over to you. First, just want to congratulate Virginia Tech on a really good performance and a good win and wish them all the best as they move forward. Um, the rest of the time, I'd like to talk about these guys. Uh, the guys in our locker room, as I just told them, have made me a better person, a better coach. Um, and it's not about winning. Uh, they've made me a better person, a better coach through all the things that we've been through. And um, I told them they've tested me on many occasions. And it's made me a better person, a better coach, uh, hopefully going forward through all that we've been through. And, uh, you know, we've been through a lot in three years. Uh, took over a program that uh, was dead last out of 14 teams. Um, and um, we were picked dead last our first year. And it's not always easy to get players to believe in a vision it's not there. You're trying to get them to believe in something that you're trying to do. And hopefully they see that. And uh, the guys in that locker room, these two guys, believed in that vision. Um, and uh, we've come a long way in just three years. And uh, I've told them over the last three or four weeks how much – Told him I'll go to war with these guys any day of the week. I'll go to war. I wouldn't trade them for anybody. Um, and I'm just really proud. I think the second half tonight was a true definition of who we are. And I told him I can go out that way. I can, I can sleep good tonight because uh, this is a team that doesn't give up. This is a, a group of young men that uh, really believed in each other. Came from a lot of different places, and uh, uh, I'm so proud of them. And they've just uh, they've taught me so much, uh, and uh, I thank them for that. All right, thanks, Coach. I'll open it up to questions for the student athletes. Just name and affiliation on the first go. Uh, Josh Shibar with Associated Press for for both you guys. Just, Coach, just talk about the resiliency you guys showed in the second half. Why do you think the game got away from you in the first half a little bit? What wasn't working for you guys? Uh, we just came out too slow, you know. It's just we kind of just relied on the. We know we didn't have big second halves the past, you know, four games in the conference tournament, and you know when you play a team that's as good as them, it, it hurts. It hurts us in the end. I just think uh, I agree with Javon said, and I just feel like the first half we weren't really weren't as aggressive as we were in the second half, as you guys could see, and if we uh, just did the little things in the first half and not rely on the second half, we would have been fine. Questions on left, third row. Ahmad Hicks, KSDK. Javon, can you just reflect on your time here as a Slew Billiken? I know it's, it was a tough way to go out, but how would you rate your overall time here? I feel like it was a good way to go out, to be honest with you. I got to go out with these guys that I love, this coach who helped me and gave me opportunity. They gave me an opportunity to play at the next level. You know, and I love Coach Ford for that, and I love my teammates for that, and I wouldn't trade it for the world. You know, I had a great experience here at SLU, and like Coach said, we set the foundation in Team Blue. We started that last year, and, and this is the standard now. That's what I told the uh, freshmen and sophomores. This is the standard. It's got to get SLU back going. The tournament is nothing less. Anything less than making the tournament is a failure. Stay right there. Hassan, this one's for you moving forward next season, what do you want to see from the team and what do you think you guys need to do in order to make that next step? As Javon said, this is the standard. So I believe that uh, we set a great foundation this year for what we need next year. Uh, Coach has done great this year, uh, leading us. Even last year, did a great job leading us. And I know he's going to do that next year. And, and I'm just going to try to follow his lead as a leader for this team next year. I'm just going to try to come back better, way better and work, work hard this summer, and the new guys that are coming in, try to show them the way. Um, also, they can look up to guys like Javon Best, uh, see how much work he put in into his game, and just look at th those guys and think that they can do something special like that. Anything else? For the I'm good? OK, thanks, guys. We'll have uh, questions for Coach.
Yeah, Travis, I was just wondering if you could um, talk a little bit about that, you know, especially the first 10, 12 minutes, and, you know, did you sense nerves, or just was Virginia Tech, do you feel that good? I thought we were very sluggish. Um, I thought we had a early fatigue, and I've seen that before. You know, these guys have been on such a, a roller coaster and on such a high uh, to an extent. And a few things I, w I was concerned about, and I didn't address it with our team. We beat this team last year, and uh, they knew that. They'd been talking, Virginia Tech had been talking a lot about that. And uh, uh, we didn't talk a lot about it because that, I think that's, uh, you know, when you win the game and you're a different team, it doesn't do a whole lot of good. You don't, you know, I know they did a lot of it to try to motivate their team as, as well as I would have. And they came out blazing uh, aggressively. Um, and we were just sluggish. We couldn't get anything going. Um, and we're just uh, – felt like we were just in quicksand. And every stat – went against everything that we're about from offense. I think we had two offensive rebounds off 16 missed shots. Uh, I think we had 12 turnovers in the first half. I can go down the line. I think they shot whatever percentage, some crazy percentage. And as you know, those, that's not really common for us. So we had, uh, we, we had a little talk at halftime. And uh, we made some adjustments, some pretty big adjustments. And uh, I think the guys found their second wind, found their second wind, and uh, kind of regrouped and made a run at it. And I thought we were a loose ball, a couple of loose balls that we actually had from really work. It's easy to say, but we're out there could have gotten really interesting, very interesting. But Virginia Tech, give them credit. Uh, there's a reason they finished at top, you know, top of the one of the best league, the best league in America and the ACC, and they've beaten the lights of Duke and go down the line. Um, that is an extremely veteran basketball team we just played. Uh, very veteran, very very well coached. Um, how they play defense is uh, kind of uh, combats our style of play a little bit. Um, and uh, give them credit. It was a little bit of a tough matchup, but I'm just really proud of how our guys regrouped at halftime and went out and uh, uh, really played well the second half. Coach, I know it was a tough way to go out, but with the guys you have coming back and the recruits you have coming in, would you say that this is the expectation for your team moving forward to be playing in the big dance? Well, yeah. you know. Um, it's hard to already start thinking ahead too much, but absolutely. You know, one thing I talked to our team about in the locker room after the game was I don't know how many teams, there's 360 something teams in America, how many teams have improved as much as we have improved in three years, year after year, and just keep, you know, gotten better every year. Uh, and that's a testament to the guys in that locker room and sticking together through tough times. And as I told them, you learn so much through adversity. You learn so much uh, if you if you allow yourself if you allow if you're humble enough to learn there, during tough times and we've had some tough times. Um, if you're humble enough to sit back and learn from it, then it can really benefit you down the road. It can really benefit you, and uh, I think we've used you know we, we've 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 been able to use some of that to help us grow and get better and continue to improve the program, but. Um, you know, we've had great support from the administration, from fans, to everybody. And uh, it, this, I said it from the first day of my press conference, in order to build a program and to get it to where you, it takes everybody. It takes everybody, managers. You know, I get me, uh, our guys gave our managers a round of applause in the locker room, uh, coaches. I mean, it takes everybody. I mean, this is, it's, it's not easy. <laughs> it's... Uh, it's a, long, a lot of long hours and a lot of sacrifices and commitments from a lot of people. And uh, when you get to experience something like this, 
It makes it all well worth it. And the relationships that I told them, you know, winning's fun. Making it to the NCAA's a blast, a memory of a lifetime. But the relationships that were built in that locker room that will last forever um, and preparing these young men to leave SLU, that's what this is all about. And uh, along the way, you get to experience, if you're lucky enough, not every, this is a, this is a, you know, you earn the right to be here. And uh, this is just kind of a bonus. Coach, can you tell me what you hope Fred, uh, Hassan, and Jordan take away from uh, this opportunity? Yeah, just hopefully um, they learn from the seniors. They get a taste of this and see what all this is about because they had no clue. They had no what idea. They've always heard of the NCAA tournament. They've always watched it on TV. Um, but they didn't really grasp what this is all about. And I try to explain it to them, you know. But until you experience it, you really don't know. And I can remember the very first time I ever went to the NCAA tournament as a player and then as a coach. And, boy, once you experience it, you just want it so much more. And, you know, when you, when you have a little success, it's, it's interesting to see how people respond. Some people get very comfortable in success, and some people it makes them work that much harder to want more of it. And uh, that makes us to – see how they respond to this. And I think they'll respond and that they, w w they want more of this and they want to even do more. Um, and uh, I think they've, they gained a, a lot of valuable experience from, from this. Mark. Uh, Mark Berman, the Roanoke Times. Uh, Travis, you talked yesterday about how you had studied Buzz and, and, and uh, to kind of uh, just kind of all, all along there. What was it about Buzz's defense today that made it such a tough shooting day for you guys? Well, it's n nothing new. What they've done all year long, they do a great job of protecting the paint. They do a great job of getting in the gaps, and they're fast and quick. You know, the biggest thing I was concerned about with their team was their speed compared to us. We're a physical team. They, they've, they've got speed and quickness, and they use that on defense, and they use it on offense from cutting to passing. Um, but they did a great job, especially in the first half, of keeping us off the glass. Um, we got back to being us in the second half, and we're able to, you know, they had us taking a lot of long shots uh, in the first half, and long shots are harder to rebound than shots at the rim. And uh, we made a, a, a special effort to get the ball where we wanted to get it in the second half, and we did a much better job of, uh, of uh, getting the ball where we wanted, offensive rebounding and playing kind of to our identity and the way we wanted the game to be played and the way we had played it from the beginning. But um, give them credit. They really did a great job of forcing us into turnovers and forcing us into tough shots in the first half. Tough shots are hard to rebound. Okay, we'll do one more question here. Coach, can you talk a little bit about Javon Bess and what you think his future holds? Well, Javon is um, – I've said it many times. Um, he's a young man who's really made an impact on me and on this program because uh, he's about all the right things. Uh, his mom and dad have really done a great job of raising a very, very, very impressive young man. Um, I've had the privilege to know Javon for three years. In those three years, I've never had to call him into my office for Missing a class, missing an assignment, for being late, for anything, nothing. Uh, he has set an example for our other players, and I use him all the time, to what it means to really make yourself a player. I'll never forget, and I told him this, sitting in my office with him and his father on a recruiting visit, and he talked about how he wanted to get better at shooting. He talked about how he wanted to get better at the guard spot, because at Michigan State, they kind of had him playing a four. And he wanted to play a wing. And he, and he wanted to learn. Um, well, a lot of kids say it. A lot of players will talk a great game, talk about what they want and what they want to accomplish, and, and they have these goals. But who's willing to do the extra? They all got to show up for practice. They all got to show up for weightlifting. But what do you do in your spare time? What do you do extra? That's what he's about.
he's made himself a player. Um, he's going to have a chance to play at the next level. I don't think there's any question he'll have a, a great chance to play at the next level because of the tangible things he can do and the character that he, that he has as a person. Um, and uh, you know all these things are true because you could ask every single person in our locker room. They would all tell you the exact same thing about Javon Best. Uh, there wouldn't be any hesitation of what people think about Javon Best. And uh, uh, I've just, like I said, he's made, me, uh, he's made me a better coach, a better person, and I've really, really enjoyed being around him every day. And, yes, coaching him, but I've just enjoyed being in his presence every day and watching a young man really do things the right way and put in the time and be humble about it, be humble, be very humble about it. And I could sit up here all night long talking about uh, Javon Bass. All right, thank you, Coach. Thank you. Thanks, folks.